We developed our international expansion strategy based on firm internal belief in further development on the European markets in the sector of kitchen appliances. We wanted to use our production capacity, needed distribution channels and brands owned by well-structured businesses. We knew already that starting a business on a new market on our own is not something we excel at. There were certain market possibilities though we had to take into consideration. We realized that there are only so many prospective partners out there and turned for help to consulting companies. These firms provided us with a list of potential companies open to restructuring, licensing or selling their brand. After a thorough evaluation, if we were interested in the presented project, the whole acquisition process would begin, from due diligence, negotiating, to purchase and signing the contract. Before we sign the contract, we perform a thorough due diligence that may take from two weeks to a month. Our specialists, together with consulting agents, prepare a well-structured bucket list to check within each of the acquired companies. The whole process happens internally and requires a dedicated team equipped with appropriate tools to check various data. The team has to focus mainly on the due diligence process and is excluded from their other day-to-day -day duties. Nowadays, we use virtual data room, so our team doesn't have to travel as much as they used to a couple of years ago. Based on the acquired data, we develop a potential bidding model and start negotiations, which are a vital point in the process. Let me show on an example how crucial are they. One of our recent cases includes an acquisition attempt in Poland, which did not end successfully, even though from the strategic standpoint, the acquisition would be highly beneficial for us. Unfortunately, both sides had very different approaches to the potential end price. We tried negotiating for a while, but we couldn't reach any consensus in the end. We usually buy shares of the whole company in one step. In case of the British company, it was one step, which took us one year. In case of the French company, there were two steps, extended to three years, which was connected to the liquidation process of the acquired firm. Most acquired firms already have their own brand, production site, workforce, offices and warehouses. When preparing a business model with each acquisition, we assume the emergence of synergies. For example, 10% savings in our purchasing processes. We calculate this potential savings based on our previous experiences, then negotiate the agreement, sign the contract and pay the final price. In the next step, our managers rely heavily on the agreed business plan and start turning it into reality after the acquisition process has been completed. I have to admit it's a big challenge. In Great Britain, we hired so-called synergy managers who were responsible for adaptation of processes on both sides, as a lot of changes were necessary. Four managers were sent to Great Britain to make sure that all processes run smoothly after the acquisition has been completed. The Synergy Managers program turned out to be a big success and we intend to continue with this approach in our future acquisitions. We face a lot of challenges along the way. Sometimes we can really work out great synergies. In some cases, however, it's difficult to meet the assumptions from the initial business plan. In Great Britain, for example, initially we planned to change a distributor. In the end, we decided against it once we found out that our customers would receive worse quality product. 
Such situations happen a lot. One of the biggest challenges is also combining two different organizational cultures. We do not have any acquisitions on the Chinese market yet, but even the British market has showed us how tricky culture differences can be. In our British firm, we noticed a very different approach to work, challenges and relations between headquarters and the acquired company. In the beginning, it came as a surprise, but I have to say it was a great learning experience for the future. Our expectations in the acquisition process are not always met. Sometimes we are surprised very positively. Other times we have to modify our initial plans according to the changing external conditions. In case of our British company, the political environment plays a crucial role. Right now, we are facing a threat of Brexit, problem of an unstable currency and tensions on the line between China and the US. We are very much aware that we do not operate in a vacuum, so potential failure is not always possible to predict beforehand. However, we learn from our mistakes and are becoming better and better with each new acquisition. It's not an easy task though. I would recommend using knowledge and support of a consulting company when undergoing your first acquisition process.